I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you today? I'm good. It's Friday, and I am Friday. really looking forward to the weekend. I know this is coming out on a Wednesday, but we're recording on a Friday yeah. afternoon, and it's a sunny day. Yep. Here in Paradise, which is central New York in the mm-hmm. summer. <laughs> Which we, I actually, so uh, I have a nephew that listens to our podcast and um, he messaged me about how much he misses Central New York summers and how he wishes he could bring his family up or needs to plan a trip to bring his family up from mm-hmm. Virginia yeah. to see. So Jason, yes, you do. It's it's so and easy to for forget. Listening. It is. I, it is a wonderful place. I joked to like our family group text to my husband's family and they all live in North Carolina and um, that a a leaf had fallen from our tree. (laughs) And um, we actually did find one fall looking leaf. It actually, I actually questioned if it was fake. It was like the perfect leaf. And Isla found it in the yard and it was, I I was like, where'd you find this? She's like, it came from the tree, I promise. But so we sent the picture and my sister-in-law who is from here, she said, I really, really, really miss this time of year. It's so beautiful up there. So the only time I see a leaf like that down here is when it's so hot that it fries a leaf from the tree. (laughs) Oh my. (laughs) And forces it to fall off. I said, oh, you know, the grass, the, the grass is always greener, right? Like you think oh, how how great it would be to have more temperate weather all year round. But our summers are spectacular. Yeah, and summer in Syracuse, the grass is always greener here mm-hmm. than you go somewhere else. You go other places, it's burnt, it's dry. Not here. It's just, yeah. this is perfect. Mm-hmm. And what I really love, what I love about the early summer and the late summer are the cool nights. Oh, me too. I love that. The nights when you open up your window and there's just this amazing Christmas in the air. And that's really what I wrote about. Mm-hmm. So one of the, so the title of today's post, the, the subtitle of today's post was Warm Summer Breezes. And I gave everybody a heads up on this last week because it was about, and, and so my inspiration came from this. It was about 53 degrees when I took my morning walk. And I take an early, I'm usually, on, I'm usually out of the house walking by 10 after 6. That's roughly about the time I, I hit the street, so to speak. Which I also noticed this morning, it was a lot darker. So much darker. <laughs> yeah, so, what, so it's a good thing. I'm wearing an SU polo today. So at least I went out with a bright orange polo on this morning. You'll be needing a but headlamp that morning, soon. What's that? You'll need a headlamp soon. I will. Well, you know, I actually have one of those that I use for when I'm working on things when I turn the power out. So I might need to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, At least I don't need an oversized load sign because I've been (laughs) walking every morning. So that would be that would be rough. But on this morning, it was 53 degrees. And and so I still had uh, just a short sleeve shirt, but I threw a vest on, a fleece vest. And I'm kind of walking and it was it was uncomfortable. Like, I love the Christmas, but Christmas is great, but not when you're going to be out for like 30 minutes. And then I would walk past these areas, and they seemed to be low-lying areas where there were trees. And as I walk by, this warm breeze would come out from under the trees and just envelop me. It was like so amazing. And the first time I was like, wow, what was that? And then as I walked a little bit more, Another one of these same low, usually you think that the cold air sits in the low lying areas, but for whatever reason, it must have been trapped by the trees or something. I don't know, but it just would waft out across the road. It was, it was amazing. So it was beautiful. The little bit of fog in the valley as I looked over toward Beacon Skiff, um, but just an amazing experience. And as I was walking, and I know this is when our listeners say, he's just weird, (laughs) but I started thinking about, is there a lesson in this? And it was this leadership lesson. When people interact with me throughout the day, am I a warm summer breeze? Or am I a bucket of ice water? And I really thought about that. And, I, and I, I, it, just, it just hit me that, you know, I know people think that leaders have to be these general patent kind of people that bark out demands. And 
There are times when that's necessary, but that is extremely rare. And I, and I see people struggling. They're, they're, they're not leaders at all. They're, they're just like tyrants and bosses that believe that their job is to make sure people do what they need to do and keep them in line. And the tragedy is all that you get from a person when that's your approach is compliance. And it's compliance when you are present. And as soon as you're gone, the compliance is gone. Mm -hmm. Because probably what your team is doing is talking about how much of a jerk or a horse is behind you've been. So people need to rethink this. And, and there's, there's another truth that is so important. Employees who are happy are 12% more productive. So if I would say to any leader, hey, how would you like to get your team to be 12% more productive? Wow, they'd be standing in line writing checks for this secret that I have. Well, guess what? It's free. Just make them happy. Keep them happy. Mm -hmm. Another one that I saw, a Harvard Business Review statistic revealed that 58% of people surveyed said they, they would trust strangers more than their own boss. Wow. That was tragic. Mm -hmm. They would trust a stranger more than their own boss. And that's probably why we've got so many problems. Getting people motivated, keeping employees. You know, people have heard me say it more than once. You know, people don't leave companies, they leave bosses. Mm -hmm. And it is so true. It is so true. So what I realized was, okay, maybe this is a teaching that, we can, that I can put into an email and then put into a, into a podcast. And, and the reality is that all of us know in our hearts what it takes to feel valued because we know when we feel valued. So a couple examples I put in here was, you know, just ask your team members their opinion. What do you think of this? I have to make a decision on this and this and this. What are your thoughts? Now, I'm not, I'm not transferring the opinion to that person, or I'm not transferring the decision to that person. I'm asking them what they think. Mm -hmm. And so long as they feel heard, you don't need to agree with them. They need to feel heard. Um, this, and Liz, my, Liz Wiseman does a great job of talking about this in, in her book, Multipliers, where she says that every leader should give their opinion last in a meeting. Doesn't mean, again, you're not... You're not abdicating the, de the decision-making to somebody else. You're just getting more feedback. Extending trust was the second one that I put here. Um, and, and yet, yes, I know you will be burned. All of us will be burned if we extend trust. Somebody's going to burn us. But the rest of the people are going to feel valued. And I, I know I've shared the story in the past of my second shift uh, machinist at Self-Lock that had really capped himself out in terms of what he was really capable of achieving in terms of, of skill sets and things like that. But one day when I, when I was stuck and I needed somebody to lock the building up at night and set the alarm, and I went up to him and I said, hey, would you do me a favor, Tony? He goes, sure, Dave. What, 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 what? And when I gave him that opportunity, his eyes lit up. I just, he said, you would trust me with that? I said, of course, why wouldn't I? Extending trust. And then the third one that I put here, which is just, um, a, a real easy one that doesn't cost us a, a penny um, before I get asked for some feedback from you on how people can feel valued. See how I just gave you a heads up on that? that that's <laughs> telling you where I'm going. That's your warning. Just say thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I it's interesting. My brother taught me this when I was still in high school and he was working as an apprentice and he had a boss that when he handed him the paycheck said thank you. And he said, I asked him one day, I said, is the boss's name, I think, was Jim. He said, Jim, why do you say thank you? The paycheck's a thank you. He goes, no, Bob, the paycheck is a, is, is a recognition for the fact that you were here last week and you did your job. The thank you is for the effort you put in. Mm. Mm. Wow. And then there's one even, if you, and it doesn't cost you a dime, the one that's even better than you saying thank you is praise your employee to your team member to your boss. And ask them to say thank you. Because then your team member knows that you are praising them to the boss. To your boss. So those are just three things that I thought of right off the bat. But can you think of ways that people, that we can 
make people feel valued? How can we become that warm summer breeze on a cool morning Mm -hmm. or a cool night to make them feel valued? I I mean, I think there are a lot of ways. I think it's probably not a one size fits all. I think um, Mm -hmm. it's a very personal thing. Like different people are going to feel valued in different ways. Um, I think it can easily, it can be something as simple as just communicating and like being vulnerable, being honest, like asking for feedback, like having those uh, conversations. I mean, when you talk about how, was it 58% of people trust a stranger more than they'd trust their boss? That tells me that they don't have effective communication and they don't feel like things are, things aren't, the communication is not a conversation. It's probably more like orders. Um, and there, yes. there's a big difference there. When we feel like our opinion is heard and, and is important to a decision, regardless of how it influences a decision, I mean, I think it's really important to be able to to weigh in. Um, and and I think that that's more than just showing you, you value someone um, as a leader. Yeah. I think that there is other benefit. So yes, you are showing others that you value them by asking for their feedback and communicating with them. But I I really do think you'll also gain some insight that you would have missed otherwise. Um, Absolutely. So it's not just like to, I'm going to ask people because I want them to feel valued. I think that it it has other benefits. Um, I think that appreciation is huge and not in the, in the sense like, right. We live in a society where everyone or not everyone, but most people like to sign their emails with thanks or thank you. Uh, And it's kind of lost its, its luster, I guess, because you use it, we use it so much. Um, Right. You know, unless you really are thanking someone like, Hey, I, I appreciate you sending this over to me on time. Like, thanks so much, Marissa. Um, That's appropriate. But I think we've gotten into this habit of just using thank you, thank you, thank you. But really, showing appreciation um you know yeah. we've experienced this sometimes at macne um, after our annual dinner which is a huge event that we typically would have in may um things are looking a little bit different this year for our virtual event but still there's a lot of hard work that goes into it and um in years past we've you know the events on a thursday typically we go into work on friday and we celebrate what we've accomplished and that typically means right. leaving early for the day uh, it's a a small price to pay for uh, people to feel valued, and I know sure. that's not something that you know can work for everyone. But um, maybe it's we've also done this at Macney. Like, let's celebrate a big accomplishment by having lunch together. Like, let's cater lunch, right. and yes. um, and it's not a working lunch. We're not watching a a presentation or um, doing training while eating lunch, which is great, David. We we totally love doing that with you. But we also really love just socializing, um, right? And 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 celebrating as a team, right? It's not just about marking a job well done, but like relishing in it and and yes. realizing like you're more than a human doing that put out this great achievement exactly. or event or outcome. You are a human being, and let's celebrate. Um, I think that goes a really, really long way for people. Exactly. Yeah, that that's great. And, you know, when you were talking about, you know, the day after the annual dinner type of thing, the extra emails that members would send, mm-hmm. just wanted to tell you, you guys did a great job last night. They didn't need to do that. You mm-hmm. know, when when people people reaching out to us and just saying how much they appreciated what Macney was doing during the really challenging times of April and May. Mm -hmm. Those things. So the question is, are we doing that enough with others? Are we doing it enough with our teams? I love how you talked about just getting the team together to just fellowship together, to to share a meal and and celebrate and enjoy Mm -hmm. things. Um, You know, I used to have this this practice when when I was at Self-Lock is I would go to Green Hills and I would buy donuts. Oh, I'm sure people loved and, that. <laughs> the and best you know donuts. what? People loved it because yeah. they were like the size of a meal mm-hmm. and it didn't cost much. And <clears throat> and I remember after I had left to go to to work with you folks at Macney, 
I went in one day and I, or I guess I got an email from the office manager that said, you know, people really miss the donuts. <laughs> and I thought, all right, I'm just going to swing by and buy them donuts. Mm-hmm. You know, because I wanted to communicate back to them that I really valued you people. <clears throat> I valued what you did to make my life what it is. Because mm-hmm. it's others that make our lives what it is. We don't. Others do. And the richness of our life is the people that we interact with. So I, I think that was that was really great, um, the, the points that you made there. I, I think another one is, do we remember things about them that aren't work-related? Mm, yeah, that's a really good one. You know, I was on a coaching call today with a coaching client, and, and he just he just shared some personal things about his family. And I never asked the question, but he identified a new grandchild. He, he mentioned his daughter's name. He talked to me about what's coming up this weekend. And just making mental notes, or if you need to, if you're my age, you may want to write these things down, which are things I do, write it down. And then, you know, so the next time I speak with him, I'm going to be saying, hey, how was this when this and this happened? Mm-hmm. And all of us, if, if, if with our coworkers, we should be trying to learn something about them, not interrogating them, but just asking what's happening. You know, you and I typically end our podcast, anything exciting happening this weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, now we do that because I'd really like to know. And it also gives a personal connection to our listeners so that we're not just talking about leadership. That personal piece will, truth be told, will get more, will get listeners to stay. That's mm-hmm. what they do. Why, why, why podcasters do it. Okay. But it's that little extra bit about somebody that you remember. Um, the, the one thing too is when you when you have a, a relationship with a person where they know they're valued you can give them honest feedback you and i talked about it before we hit record mm-hmm. you know where you want to be able to give a person honest feedback and and i'll share with the with our listeners feedback you gave me so i had to do this video <laughs> for the marketing piece for and i don't know did we talk about it last week oh uh, i we might I don't know. It all blends Maybe. together. Well, if it was anyways, a different meeting or... It, 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 yeah, who knows? You and I have enough conversations. But mm-hmm. but so I recorded this and I was so proud of it. And I had a beautiful virtual backdrop with my John Maxwell team logo on it type of thing or wording on it. And and I recorded... It was, it was for our virtual Live to Lead marketing piece and, and landing page. And so I was just so happy with it. I thought I did such a great job. I was like Peter Jennings sitting there, you know, at the which was the problem. So I let my wife see it. I let my son Tim see it. And they're like, oh, what's the matter with you? <laughs> I said, nothing. Why? And, and the funny part is they will say, did Marissa see this? <laughs> and so when I asked you, and then I ran an errand and I just messaged you, hey, what did you think? Of, so what was your answer? I told you that I thought it was good but that it seemed a little infomercially. Yeah. So I loved how you couched it. <laughs> it was good, comma. Because it but was. It, <laughs> you know, had you only had yeah. one shot at it, it would have been good. It would have worked. But I and knew basically there was you more. Said, <laughs> Relax, it's not you. Mm-hmm. So I did. So I shot it again. So I got the lights out. And I got the green screen out and I got the camera set up and I shot it again. And I even joked. I said, so it's, I'm going to do it in shorts and a T-shirt and a baseball cap, which I didn't. But I changed my phrasing. Mm-hmm. I made it a little bit more me. And I'm glad that you felt comfortable saying it. And you can do so if we have coworkers, if think I think maybe this is should be a test for all of us. Do we have coworkers where we can't say something like that? And if the answer is yes, which I'm sure it will be because I have coworkers that I'm still not at that point, those might be coworkers that we need to show that we value a bit more. Mm-hmm. Now, you're never going to have all of your coworkers where you're on the same level with an emotional connection. That's normal. But I'm really glad that I've got some coworkers that'll say, ah, you know what? Yeah. Mm-mm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So next time, don't be afraid. Just write back and say, 
take two, <laughs> relax a bit. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot more of this video type of thing. Mm -hmm. And and I need to, I need the feedback so that it is more acceptable to people. Yeah. And I, and I think it's those same people that you have that value and trust with is that that will, you know, see you on a Zoom call or, you know, if you are someone right. who's working in the office, they'll see you in passing and say, you know, like, you look tired or looks like, yeah. you know, is everything okay? Um, right. And we need that. Like, we, we, as humans, need that in our lives because sometimes, you know, sometimes we're not okay or sometimes... Right. We are struggling and it's right. hard, it, you know, it's some, it can be hard to like bring that up. But when you have someone who can, you know, identify that for you and, and say something, yes. it really can, can change a lot. Um, and I Chris, think you, Chris, get, you get that. Yeah. Chris Hogan said it last year at Live to Lead where he said, you know, when you, he said every, at least twice a week, every good leader says this, something like this to their team is individuals, how are you? And he said, don't just listen, mm -hmm. look them in the eye. Because their, their voice might say they're fine, their eyes might tell you something else. Mm -hmm. What are you working on and how can I help? That was, those were the other two questions. Mm -hmm. But then he talked about asking one of his team members, how are you? And he said, her voice said fine, but her eyes said something else. And I said, come mm -hmm. on, let's go talk. Mm -hmm. That eye contact is critical. Mm -hmm. That's showing that you value that person. Not just, hey, hi, how are you? And move on without hearing the answer even. But look them in the eye, and you're going to know. And that is a problem when a lot of us are still virtual. Um, Simon yeah. Sinek had a really great, like a two-minute YouTube video last night that I saw where he talked about, don't think we can stay virtual. Because a lot of our human connection is, uh, is, 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 has to be a face-to-face -face from time to time. Mm-hmm. So that's something we're all going to have to kind of embrace. It's a good thing that our masks don't cover our eyes. Because our eyes can tell us a lot mm -hmm. about other people. Um, there was another thing I wanted to touch base on here. Invest in their continued development. If you value somebody, you're going to invest in them getting better. Mm -hmm. Even if it means they get so good, they leave. Yeah. But that's just what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Always invest in people getting better. Well, and that comes to you, know, like you said, like people don't leave their job, leave their jobs, or they leave their bosses. Um, right, right, and and that goes both ways. People don't always stay with their jobs; they stay with their bosses. Um, sometimes yeah. that's enough to to keep someone engaged, and you know, I think that that's really important. I think. That's the human piece to say, right. I want what's best for you, what's going to help you in the future, regardless yes. of where you are, because you are a person and I am a person, right? Person right. to person, that's what I want for you. Human but, beings, not human doings. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Not, you know, the uh, institution of this organization hopes that you stay forever. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, another quick note I had here was, you know, touch base early and often with people. Mm -hmm. Just, hey, how are you? Just wanted to, just wanted to check in. Anything I can do to help? Yeah. So there is a piece that could be misunderstood. And I think you know where I'm going because we touched on this earlier. This does not mean that you're not the leader. You're still the leader. You still are the person that can mm -hmm. hold people accountable. And you don't let people walk all over you. Right. Because there will be people that will try. And I really think that if you are that person that values other people, mm -hmm. they're going to know when you have to say, yeah, I'm sorry, but I can't, this can't continue. Mm -hmm. This needs to change. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the team will see that too. If you're not willing to call out privately, when things need to be addressed, bad behavior, you're not a leader. Mm -hmm. Then you just want to be somebody's friend. And it's wonderful. If you, don't, if, if you don't want to lead, don't. But you have to be able to stand up. This, so, so what I'm saying is we're, we're never a doormat for people to wipe their feet on us. The organization deserves better. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So you set expectations up front. You hold people accountable to those expectations. But in doing that, you also are that warm breeze on a cold morning when they just need to know that they're safe. Mm -hmm. And I think when you are genuinely in that space of really genuinely valuing people, which, right. you know, and at first it might feel a little forced, right? When you're like realizing, you know, maybe this is a wake up call. Like I need to start valuing people. You've talked about this. You've talked about your yep. wake up call to valuing people right. on other podcasts. Um, I think at first it can feel tough. Like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try to learn you know, about people and okay, like let's do this. Right. So at first it might be tough when you're in that genuine place of just, that's your, your norm. Um, Mm -hmm. you will be, I think you will have less issue with people treating you like a doormat. Absolutely. I, absolutely. And, and you, because, and people will know that if you really believe, if you're really interested in what's best for them, mm -hmm. you're going to call them out when they deserve it to be mm -hmm. called out. Mm -hmm. And you may get rid of people because that's what's best for the organization and them mm -hmm. if you truly value them. And you're right, people will not walk all over people that truly value others because you know what? You don't want to you don't want to abuse a person that values people. I remember once uh some years I don't remember which John Maxwell event I went to for one of my every year I need to go to a certification um event. And actually it's it's happening this weekend. So it's not in person, it'll be virtual, but my next three days are gonna be really, really busy. Um but the, the slogan was people of value adding value to others. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's a cool one. Yeah. And that's really what leadership's all about. Mm -hmm. Did we forget anything? I mean, I think we could talk for hours about ways to we value people. We could do people. a part two. <laughs> we could do a part two. But I mean, I think take an honest assessment of the people in your lives and, and yes. say, how can I sh show this person value? Right. It, and realize know. that there's probably areas where you're not doing well. It could mm -hmm. be home. You know, if I reflect on my last week at home, I didn't show that I valued the people that I, that live with me mm -hmm. the way I should have. Yeah. And thankfully it was brought up and I can try to do better. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like it, you know, take an inventory. How are you doing? And be authentic and admit it when you didn't. Just say, well, I'm really sorry. Yeah. There, I'm going to do better. There's a Maya Angelou uh, quote that I've always really liked and I, I think fits this conversation well. Um, she said that I've learned that people will, will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Exactly. And I, I think that fits in perfectly with what we're trying to communicate yep. today is that really thinking Agreed. about how you're making people feel and hopefully Agreed. it's valued. Yes. So you want to know what we're talking about next week? Of course. It's an inside job. Mm. So. All right. Anything you want to talk about in terms of plans for the weekend? Plans, of, you know, the weather looks a little cool on Sunday, which I'm not mad about. Um, and I, I love the kind of fall preview days. I'm hoping that we can get the girls out for a uh, a little hike. That's their new good favorite thing. So, how about you? Good. Well, I'm doing my John Maxwell vir virtual certification event. Mm -hmm. So all day Saturday, half of Sunday, and all day Monday, I will be staring at a computer screen. Wow. It'll be great. I'm excited it about you'll, it. I can't yeah, wait to, I'm sure you'll get a lot to get from to the it. Content. Quick update before we log off. The boat ran wonderful. Oh, good. So I'm smiling as I say it. Mm hmm So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. Mm -hmm.